Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 141. And today we've got a great show for you. Today we're talking all about how you guys can continue to stay relevant, stay in those classrooms, help out your teachers. And we have a fantastic panel. But before we get to our conversation today, I want to bring on Sue Vincent. Sue, how are you today? Welcome back to Ask the Tech Coach. I am great. It's so great to be back. Great to be recording again and, uh, you know, seeing light at the end of this school year tunnel. How about you? There, There is a lot of light at the end of the school year tunnel. Lots of great things I'm looking forward to. But you know what? I had a recent conversation in our Tech Coach roundtable meetings every Wednesday. And a Tech Coach said to us, that they're having problems staying relevant. They're having problems getting into classrooms. Teachers, of course, are just, you know, crazy and nuts with the whole year. They're fed up. They've had it. I don't think that tech coach is alone, but today we're going to see if we can help that tech coach out and kind of crack the code here. We've got some great guests today. I want to bring on one of our instructional learning coaches in my school district, Dr. Daniel Krynas. Dan, how are you today? Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me back. Uh, I'm good. And I know I agree with you that this is a very difficult and busy time of year, stressful time of year. Uh, If this school year wasn't stressful enough, uh, state testing and and wrapping up the year, it's been tough. But I think there are some ways that coaches can help uh, ease everyone's minds at the end of the year. So I'm really excited to talk about it. Thanks for having me. And uh, how are things on the Leader of Learning podcast? Things are good. Um, Ever since this 2021 year started, uh, we've been coming out with episodes at least every week, some really great guests and talking about some relevant education and educational leadership topics. We're having a lot of fun and I have a pretty big guest and surprise in store for my quote unquote season finale this year. So stay tuned for that. We'll certainly have to get some of those links on our show notes over at episode number 141. And Sue, you brought a friend on the show today uh, who was with us from the great state of Kentucky. I did. I'm so excited to have another Kentucky colleague. I've been working on this for weeks to try to get a Kentucky person with me. So I'm excited to welcome Miss Rebecca Reynolds. She's a digital innovation leader here in a neighboring school system um, with which I work. Rebecca, welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. Thank you, Miss Susan. I'm happy to be here. And of course, it's not only to have two Connecticut tech coaches and two Kentucky two tech, tech coaches. We also have two California tech coaches. I want to bring on Miss Catherine Goyette. Catherine, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I am great. Thank you very much. Glad to be here and great topic. Uh, it certainly is. It can be as a tech coach. It can be a little bit uh, uh frustrating to uh see how how uh teachers are so overwhelmed and over it and so uh but yeah we definitely uh uh my uh partner in crime here and uh, uh husband and also another tech coach uh adam waters and i uh have um talked about this and found some strategies that worked for us because it is a tough time so adam how are you today welcome back to the show Oh, great to be back. I'm glad I responded to you on Facebook and you gave me a reason to come back. So looking forward to uh, engaging with everybody. Now, I'm so glad that you two are on here because you guys are the authors of an amazing book from uh, Dave Burgess uh, Publications called The Complete Ed Tech Coach. Um, I'm going to open up the floor and ask you the question. Um, where in your book can I learn about coaching during the pandemic in the last month of the school year? What <laughs> chapter, what page is that on? Honestly, it's uh, I don't think that's uh, actually anywhere in there because we, we, we wrote <laughs> most of it pre-COVID and, and we threw in a few blurbs there. But uh, I think the strategies there are are pretty universal, COVID or not. But yeah, that, that, 
we didn't foresee that coming when we were when we were uh, putting pen to paper. You, you know what I will say though is uh, we talk in the book about um, trying to help teachers li- make teachers' lives easier. Um, he, Adam talks a lot, a lot about his ditch that copier movement and things with teachers, and so uh, helping them be more efficient with technology, even with just like the end of the school year paperwork stuff they have to do. Sometimes that's a good in. Um, because uh, we still want to be relevant and we still want them to be coming to us and we'll still still uh, build those relationships. So even though that wasn't written, um, knowing COVID would be here, I think it would be uh, helpful at this time. Yeah, we you talk know, a lot. It? Go ahead. We talk a lot about, in the book, easing pain points. That's, uh, and you know, that that's COVID or not, there's always gonna be pain points. So just being in tune to what those pain points are right now um, are definitely uh, something that can definitely help teachers uh, right now. It's just since I want to say it's been about a month, we've had students back on campus in a hybrid model. Um, so I was excited because I got to walk classrooms again. It was great. I got, I got a, a sense of normalcy again. I got to walk classrooms and, and just observe and leave positive feedback on some sticky notes. And those those um, <clears throat> observations led to, as we say in the book, or, or organic tech coaching because now – they were responding to me. They're happy to. Some of them were actually happy to see me, which I was, I was kind of <laughs> pleasantly surprised. But they, uh, they, yeah, it's led to a few projects that I've worked on with. I know with a few uh, sixth and seventh grade teachers that are, that are a little. They're, 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 they're uh, outliers. That they're gung ho. Like they, they want to totally revamp their, their, their history instruction for next year. I'm like, well, I have a, I have a, I have a credential in history. I can help with that. <laughs> so I've been building. I've been curating the crap out of their, their resources and their curriculum, and they are ready to go for their, for their summer planning. So that's definitely one pain point I was organically able to uh, address. Well, thank you, everybody, for being on. I am looking forward to a great conversation. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there has these same issues, please feel free to get a hold of us. You can find us over at askthetechcoach.com. We, of course, have our great Tech Coach Roundtable meetings every single Wednesday that are totally free. You guys can check it out. And, of course, you can find us over on Twitter all over the place at Ask the Tech Coach. And, Guys, let's just kind of talk about the basics here. How has the year been? What are some of the wins? What are some of the struggles? Dan, let's talk about uh, some of the great things that you're doing. But uh, give, give us the 30 second here. What, what's, what are some of the wins that you're really, really proud of that, that happened this year to you? Well, I think first and foremost, and I've heard you talk uh, about this on the show before, Jeff, is is really the formation of our team of digital learning coaches in our district. Um, it, it it not only meant a lot to the schools and the school leaders uh, to get coaches like us in the buildings, uh, but it's as we're going to learn here over the next few days, actually, it's, uh, to my knowledge, a big part of the strategic plan that the district has for the next several years, three to five years. And, and I really think the biggest win is is having full-time dedicated instructional coaches whose roles it is in the district to provide and support that digital learning. Because clearly this year has been difficult and, and it's forced a lot of change um, and maybe too rapidly, but hey, that that's just, uh, that's just what we had to do and, and adapt and overcome. But I, I know the big question out there, and, and maybe that's why we're having this conversation about like, what do we do at the end of this year? Where do we go next year? Um, how do we now kind of go back to pre-COVID teaching and learning? What does that look like? Is it really going back or is it moving forward? Is it really new? Do we keep some of the old? You know, and, and so I think there's just a lot of question marks. But to answer your question, um, we've definitely had some wins. We formed our team of, of digital learning coaches. Uh, three out of the four of our middle schools in the district are now part of the Verizon Innovative Learning Schools grant program, which um, I'm super pumped about. And, and it's generating a lot of excitement so far. Our teachers are being onboarded next week. I think that's going to be a great program that first and foremost provides uh, Chromebook devices or iPads, but our district is going to be Chromebooks to every student and every teacher, which will allow connectivity anywhere where there's Verizon cell phone service. So really bridging that tech gap and, and understanding that 
Uh, some students have a hard time connecting at home and where, wherever they're at when they're not in school. So really, you know, a lot of good things happening and a lot of good things to look forward to in the future. Nice. Rebecca, what are you excited about? What was, uh, what was so good about this year for you? I think that, um, in my district, I don't know if Susan knows too much about our district. I know we're kind of involved together. We, my team of tech coaches, we are at the district level. We are sometimes boots down in those schools, um, but we're only two per, and my dog's going to start playing with the toy. We're only like two um, per zone. So like 30 elementary schools I'm working with. And I think this um, pandemic has kind of created awareness um, of what we need boots down in schools. Um, we are, the entire district is giving and spending money to provide every single school with an interactive flat panel, mm. um, which is, I, we were saying we felt like Oprah, giving everybody such amazing mm -hmm. tech. Um, but as I think it was, um, Dan kind of mentioned that they don't, are they going to start over? Are we going to do the same thing, the old thing? And I like, for me, I want to like throw it out. I want us to just have that fresh start and kind of push everybody to just take a breath, see what you have and just move forward. So we're excited <laughs> for next year. And Sue, what else is happening in Kentucky that we are excited about? What, what's what been going on with your school this year? Well, in my school district, of course, I'm in a private school district within the same area as uh, Rebecca's public school district. So we've been face to face all year, except for three weeks. But, you know, we have been having lots of deep conversations in our curriculum department, of which I'm a part of, about what do we keep? What do we throw out? What do we make better? How do we move forward? And, you know, we're having lots of awesome conversations about, you know, the the technology that we have learned to use and the teachers, whether the word forced is the right word here, but they've been forced to use it. And now they're excited about it. I've got, I'm getting ready to buy um, a big bulk of Google certification vouchers just because mm. it's time for us to buy some more for our district. And I have this long list that I have never had in my life of teachers interested in uh, getting one of those vouchers to take the Google certification test. So that's awesome because they feel comfortable now. Used to it would be, I don't know if I have the skills to pass that. And I'm like, well, if you use Google at all, you're pretty good with level one. But now <laughs> they're ready and they're ready to move on to level two. So that's exciting stuff there. They're, they're excited. They've learned some new skills and they're feeling more confident. That's awesome. And how about you guys out on the West Coast? Um, well, we certainly, um, both Adam and I have noticed that uh, our value in the past year and a half was uh, recognized um, by teachers, by the districts. Um, for me, um, like Rebecca, I serve, I, I serve an entire county, and so there's a lot of um, school, there's a there's over 200 schools, but I don't contract with all of them. And so this year, for the first year, I have a lot more requests for support than I've ever had before that I cannot fill um, with my calendar, which is an excellent problem to have. And, and uh, superintendents are saying, oh, are they going to hire another one? And I'm saying, well, I, that would be great <laughs> because um, I, I think that they're, they're recognizing that uh, not only was this um, a necessity for the past year, but we never know if this is gonna happen again. We've purchased all this technology. We don't want it to go to waste, you know, um, and they know that they need someone to help the teachers uh, use that technology purposefully, whether they are in person or go back to distance or hybrid or whatever it may be, they still know that that, that purposeful use of technology is really important. So that's been a real win because of, um, uh, because again, um, what we do has been valued and, and there's been a lot of steps forward with equity, um, as well as far as there, there's still some holes. We, we have real rural areas. And so there's, there's still places where internet connectivity is tricky. Uh, but there's been a lot of strides made, which has been exciting. How about you, Adam? Um, I think probably the biggest win I had was this recurring comment that I've heard from teachers that I've been supporting. And some of these teachers are ones who were resistant, known to be resistors. But I've heard them say, I'm not going back to the way it was anymore. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going back. Like, I don't know why I resisted before. 
and now I see the value of it. So that's very reaffirming for the work that I've been putting in for years now. And and so I remember when we when we uh, published the book, our first we were kind of worried, like, man, um, are, is that what's tech coaching going to look like in the future? I mean, are we ever going to go back to what school was? And at first we were a little worried that, hey, you know what, maybe there's not going to be a need for us. But now that teachers have been, were forced to have that taste of real authentic uh, ed tech integration, now they don't want to go back. And they, they, they have their foot in the door now. Now, now, that, now they want in. And now they want more. And I, I think that's just going to, going to bolster the need for tech coaches. I know, Rebecca, you're talking about how you're starting to see the need for now for you have all those schools that you got to support. Now you're going to try to push to get someone in each one of those schools. I know Dan, you said you have someone in each one of your schools. Uh, that, that's great. I, I'm jealous. Cause I mean, I, I support three schools and I teach two periods. So um, to, to have that extra help and people to collaborate with would, would be great. And I want to, I really want to think that the, the, um, just the, the expansion of ed tech coaches is going to, is, is on the horizon. So, Let's look at the next few weeks here, right? Whether you're listening to the show on the day that it drops or you know, a couple of days later, it is a, a conversation today of how do we stay relevant? Now, recently I, I, I put this out on Facebook and Adam, you had an interesting way of staying relevant. Um, what was that thing that you mentioned on Facebook today of how you're being helpful and, and sneaky, but also being awesome at the same time to your teachers? Yeah, this is one thing that, you know, Catherine and I, we, we have sessions that we presented often about it, and it's a big part of our book. It's part of, part of the mechanics of the job, how, how to get into classrooms. And really right now, normally I would leave, you know, positive feedback and then some constructive feedback, but I know how burnout teachers are. They don't have the the brain space right now and just the, the, the oomph right now to deal with anything constructed so i'm just gonna leave positive stuff I was, whatever i see i love it so this is what i love and i mean th- there's the old saying you you catch more uh you catch more bees with honey than vinegar so i've been you know i'm just leaving uh post-it notes i'm walking in staying for a few minutes i'm, I'm taking notes about what i observe um and it just helps me to to support them going forward and i before i leave i drop a few post-it notes on there custom post-it notes that i made in google slides has my bitmoji on it and everything is pretty cool and uh, I believe that's in the book, isn't it? It is. That's and you, right. we got that idea from um, ben, ben Cogswell, ben Cogswell uh, yeah. another uh, tech coach, now back in, in the kindergarten yeah. classroom. But, um, yeah, we, we do give credit where credit is due. So, <laughs> yeah, just back to what I was saying. And that, that feedback led to teachers reaching out to me. Hey, I want to plan something fun for the rest of the year because it's been so boring. And now I have some kids in front of me. Well, I, I know you have some some ideas. And I'm like, oh, you know I do. So I, I've been planning with them for about two weeks. And really going through their curriculum and getting them set up for next year, and we have a nice little, uh, real fun choice board activity that we're, we're going to two week project that the kids are going to be doing on the Renaissance. So that right there was just a simple way to to get me in the classrooms and get teachers uh, interested in doing something different. I love that idea, right? And, and I'm sure you get people asking you things like the tech coach is giving out paper thank you notes and paper stickies and stuff. Um, but that's a great way to not only bring up conversation, but stay relevant. But hey, did you get did you get your sticky from from Adam and stuff like that? I, I love that idea. Anybody else have little tchotchkes they give out or a little, you know, hey, here it is. You guys walk around with a bunch of like M&Ms or like what <laughs> what is everyone doing just to kind of say, don't forget that I'm here. I love that you guys or I guess just Adam is doing the sticky notes. I don't know about you, Kat. Um, I think that these teachers are so kind of lost and we are like the big papa, big mama, the lighthouse out there kind of shining a light on them. We need to celebrate everything so wildly. They tweet something about, I'm thinking about being Google certified. We need to retweet that. We need to celebrate them. We need to just email their principal, bring people on um, and really just keep shining a light on them. I feel like that's my goal right now at the end of the year is just to keep encouraging them whatever small thing that they do and have their back. I love that. I used to be so much better at that before the pandemic and then things got busy. Imagine that, but you know, that's great motivation and just a great reminder for us as tech coaches, just to celebrate our teachers. I used to try to post something at least two or three times a week and 
you know, here it is the end of this trying year and, you know, give them some kudos out there. Now, Dan, you recently created a video um, to your teachers. Could you talk a little bit about uh, that video that you created? Was it effective? How effective was it? And, and, and what was that video all about? Yeah, I'd love to explain that in a minute, and it has been really effective. Before I do, I just want to go back, actually, to something that Adam said. Uh, he talked about teacher resistance, and uh, it's something that I've talked a lot about before. As a matter of fact, I wrote about 150 pages worth of a dissertation that I defended successfully last year on, on getting teachers out of being resistant and adopting more of a growth mindset. And, and one of the biggest themes that came out of my research was providing opportunities and, you know, COVID uh, clearly by default provided opportunities for our teachers to have to step out of their comfort zone. Um, and, and our jobs were to help them feel more comfortable. And so, uh, I, uh, like you said, Jeff, I, I recently took the opportunity to, even though I've been in the position for a few months now and, and I've gotten to know many of the teachers, there are still some that I haven't gotten to know yet. And, and I wanted to treat the end of the year like it's an opportunity to kind of let's get to know each other better. Uh, so I put out a, a video to uh, the three schools. I don't want to, Adam, don't get me wrong. I'm still supporting three schools, but at least it's not 200 or whatever Kat said uh, before. <laughs> um, so, you know, I put out a video to the three, uh, the staffs at the three schools and I, I introduced myself again and I talked about some of the things that I can support teachers with. And just like we're talking about here, I really emphasized that I know we're in a really busy and stressful time of the year, but it could also be a really valuable time of the year too in starting to look ahead at getting prepared for next year. And why not take the last few weeks of the school year to have a conversation about maybe there's something you want to try out and, and really what's the risk of trying it out in the last few weeks of the school year? You know, for teachers, I know that it can be tough uh, these final few weeks, but at the same time, Although they've brought back, unfortunately, in my opinion, they've brought back state testing this year, that kind of allows for that like release after they're done, like the weight is off your shoulders. And now you have three, four or five weeks, at least at the end of the year to be like, you know, the testing is out of the way. Um, you know, we're winding down. Let's try something. Let's put out a flip grid topic. Let's create some podcasts or, or videos or whatever it is. And, and you just go for it. Like, what do you have to lose? Because honestly, for the most part, these students probably won't be your students for more than another few weeks. Like what's the risk? What's the worst that could happen? And so I was just trying to really um, provide opportunities and, and, and tell teachers that, you know, it's okay. Um, and, and uh, you know, Let's let's kind of settle in in the last few weeks and let's try some stuff together. I'm here to support you. Talk to us a little bit about how that was brought out. Did you email? Did you stick it somewhere? Well, how, how do you make sure? Because, I mean, I can see with Adam, you know, Adam, where do you put those stickies? Are they on the doors? Are they on the mailbox? Like, how do people know that you're there so that way other people know that you are somewhere? Uh, usually what I do is um, um, it I usually I'll duck out while they're still in front of the class teaching, and I'll I, I may write three or four sticky notes, and I go over to their to their desk and leave them right on their laptop where I know they're not going to miss it. So I, that's that's worked pretty this well. This has been a little tricky though with uh, distancing and such. I didn't notice that. Did you have that problem at first? No, not really. Oh, that's good. Yeah, depending <laughs> on where the desk is. Well, I did because I work with different districts, so some schools were a lot more kind of strict than others. Ours were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yours wasn't, but. Um, yeah, on their desk is usually a good good place. Dan, how did you pass your message around to people? So with the video I created, um, you know, I basically uh, just sent out the the actual video in an email to uh, to all three schools. Um, and you asked me before, was it successful? Yeah, I did get a lot of teachers reaching out to me, booking time with me. Uh, as a matter of fact, this the reason I wanted to come on here and, and share tonight as well is just today, it's really timely. I had a couple of teachers literally, like I said, reach out to me and start talking about, hey, where do you see things going? What do I need to work on? I mean, one teacher was asking me, how do I clear up? You know, how, do, how can I spend some time this summer and really clear up and organize my Google Drive? Uh, another teacher was a little bit more, uh, it was a little bit more like heavy coaching or, or deep learning for that teacher. It was like, 
I'm a Spanish teacher and I want to know how I can really bring in more tech tools into my Spanish class and and wanted a list of, of some tools to look into uh, at the end of the school year and into the summer. And, and I gave her some ideas, things like Flipgrid and things like uh, Wii Video, which is something that is pretty big or getting bigger in our district. And, you know, so it was a, a little bit more like diving deeper into, hey, you tell me where you want to go with your Spanish class, and I think I might be able to match you up with some pretty cool tools that uh, you're really going to enjoy using with your students. But more importantly, students can create some really awesome stuff that that will show you how much they're actually learning from your class. But it was really all about setting them up for success, not just at the end of this school year, but even going into next school year. I love the idea. Like when I saw the video, I said, that's absolutely perfect. It hit everything high, kind of resets, reintroduces. Now, Rebecca, you put something on the show notes. I, I'm not sure what the acronym is. You said T-C-O-Y. What, what is this? Yeah, and I'm doing a terrible job at, at explaining how I celebrate my <laughs> teachers. <laughs> um, so we're, we're a band, we like to call ourselves. Um, and I put together a Spotify playlist. And we have at each school one unpaid position. Uh, they are our school digital innovation leader. So our Estills, um, they are unpaid. They are my rock stars. Um, we meet together. I celebrate them with what we call yes cards, um, which I send in the mail or I do through Twitter. Um, if they don't have Twitter, which I always encourage them to, I will email it to them. Um, but t is actually, and I know Listeners can't see this book, but it is from the Distance Learning Playbook. And I hate to show another book when we have amazing authors here today. But the first chapter um, just starts out with this word, uh, acronym, TCOI, take care of yourself. And that's something that I start off every uh, meeting or if, if I have one of my Estills reach out, they're just struggling. I'm like, okay, how are you taking care of yourself? Um, because I think that our teachers forget about that. Um, whether taking care of yourself is like actually taking a break at planning um, and stepping away. So that's something that I like constantly am encouraging um, my teachers to do, take care of yourself. So hopefully all of you are too. <laughs> now, Adam Cat or Adam Cat, as I'm looking at here, one of the things that you mentioned was creating uh, video montages, portfolios, uh, What's that all about? How do we get teachers to kind of go in that completely left direction if they've never done these things? Or is this just a way to help wrap up the school year? What what, what are you guys doing with uh, with video portfolios, digital playlists and stuff like that? That's a good way that I found, you know, there are there are some teachers that have said, I just I'm like you. Would, uh, I think you'd alluded to earlier. Um, well, we're done with state testing and I, I kind of don't know what to do now. And I'm burnt out and I don't really want to, you know, not, not that I don't want to teach, but like, what do I do now? I, I, you know, what's going to get the kids excited? Because is there something that they can do that isn't just the same old thing? And so letting them know that, hey, you know, I could come in and show your second graders how to make a Google site and we can they can put some of their favorite work on there. Um, or the older students, they are. Older students already know how to make videos, right? So just showing them how to kind of curate that and put it all in one place, um, even if it is per perhaps on a Google site or something like that. But giving the kids, um, the kids are the ones that are owning the work, to be honest, when you're doing something like that. And so uh, the teachers find that it's actually less work for them than they anticipated. And I'm totally willing to go in and model that with the kids and show them how to do it so they don't have to know all that. If I don't have the time or I'm not available, Adam is a, is a great, um, we tell the story about how Adam will make, uh, you showed some, you had, you had your uh, student that went on Twitter and said, Mr. Juarez is teaching me how to oh, yeah. use Blogger. And Adam wasn't even there. It was a video tutorial he made. So it, you don't even necessarily, because you were already booked, like yeah. double booked in another classroom. And so um, the great part is then word spreads, right? So we're giving them something that the kids are gonna enjoy they don't have to do a lot of planning. They just like, you know, you're telling the, the, the kids, tell me some of the things you learned. Should throw in some of the things that you really liked doing this year, um, et cetera. So 
I, I like the suggestion. You know, recently on Teacher Cast, we partnered up with a great company called Spaces. I haven't heard of Spaces or spacesedu.com. It's basically it's a big digital portfolio company. But I'm looking through this and I'm going, you know what, Dan? This is a great way to start teaching podcasting because a digital portfolio could be as simple as making audio posts or making video posts. You're not publishing anything. You're teaching kids digital citizenship, commenting, all those things. Dan, have you got run into anything in any of your buildings? where teachers are are trying to let's just use the general word make a podcast but that could be audio video we video like have you done anything like that this year with your staff a little bit here and there um to be honest uh, recently i'm not exactly sure why but i've gotten more teachers interested in having students create um graphics and infographics than right. audio and video um and I'm, I'm and i'm still not sure why in our district canva is uh denied for students but i've i've really been actually showing teachers more um how to use adobe products adobe spark in particular and um you know, I like to think that I have a lot of tr tr tricks up my sleeve and tools that I can, I can, uh, you know, turn teachers onto. I mentioned We Video before is one that I would love to see more and more teachers and and especially students using. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm all about student content creation. So there have been times where we've used everything from um, really like just garage band type recording platforms all the way to we video and even uh, synth to, to create podcasts you know and, and, and audio only flipgrid has mic only mode now i love that so um i love i love working with teachers on getting their students to create content like that i really do i always look at this and say play the long game right i i, I know in in the building that i particularly work at We've done a lot of great stuff this year. The teachers have been wonderful. They've certainly embraced me, but let's face it. I'm sure like your buildings, there are times where there are, uh, you know, health comes before instructional coaching sometimes. Let's just put it that way. Um, there are times where even though I'm working with a teacher, I'm already starting to prep for next year. Hey, what are some of the things you want to look at for next year? What are what are some of the summertime things you want to be focusing on? I'm already starting to ask those questions now versus, hey, can I come in and work with you and your students? Because right now we've got standardized testing. Right now we've got the field day. Right now we've got the end of the year. We've got all these things. Nobody wants to hear can I come in and teach your kids Google Slides? But having just the conversations for next year, I, I've been finding that's been a great way to, you know, continue making friends, making, you know, getting the ball rolling and, and really helping to figure out where the district wants to position themselves these years. Um, where are you, or is anybody here on the terms of have you guys started planning next year, prepping next year, figuring out what kind of PD for next year? Um, when you're free are you building videos already for summertime pd what what does the beyond june conversation look like for everybody so far well for us like yeah. I re go ahead. Go ahead. for us like i referred to earlier we have been deep into those conversations about what to keep what to let go but also professional development what is our focus for next year where does technology come into that and all of these things that line up to make the new year successful. So we are definitely deep into those conversations. And as the tech coach, and the other curriculum specialists are discussing the content stuff. So I'm coming alongside of them to see what I can support um, in the area of technology. You know, one of our big focuses next year is math is in our elementary schools is a huge thing. So I'm working on already, what can I do to support with tech tools in math? for use with our one-to-one -one pro Chromebook program and all of that. So we're definitely deep into those conversations. Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> I've, uh, I've been already targeting our instructional coaches. Um, and I, as we say in our book, um, you know, we need to be in there in the planning sessions. And we kind of need to be that uh, professional thought partner while they're planning, we need to be there, they need to bounce ideas uh, off of us back and forth and that makes the planning so much easier because if they plan without us then we come back and see what their instruction is it's it's like we have to rework it, we have to re redo the work so it, it's better to, to, to kind of do it right the first time i've also been uh i mean our, our admin are just as busy as anybody probably busier than everybody and our district level admin especially and 
that I, I, I keep hearing through the grapevine that they, they're making decisions about about tech stuff, and they, they, they it's almost like they're so busy they, they forgot to consult me. So I've been really banging on the door. Hey, let's meet. Let, let's talk about this. I, I, I know some ways that we could probably save some money. Um, I, I, I know that's, uh, that's what you pay me for, and I, I'm, I'm aware of some things that you know we don't we don't need too we don't need as many tech tools, but we, we can get really good at, at a few and just roll with these. And I have some ideas for devices, apps, everything, and so just making sure that you know you got to remember they're they're busy and they're 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 gonna forget things, and it's it's just the nature of the beast right now. So we have to kind of be there uh, to our own horn and make sure make sure that, that they remember us because it's I don't I don't see it as that they're avoiding me on purpose. They're just they're just dealing with a lot right now. So we we got to be there and vouch for vouch for ourselves and and uh, make sure that we're there to to, to help them out. So that's definitely uh, conversations I'm having. Uh, for summer planning and going forward through next year. Just to pick, like- just to pick up from what Adam said, Sarkat, um, yeah, you know how everyone sets their one word for the year? Uh, way back in January, start of the year, I set my one word for 2021 as assert, like be more assertive, assert myself better in situations, not to be like overbearing, but just make sure that I'm being heard and felt and, and that, you know, my presence is known uh, in, in my schools and, and maybe even throughout the district. And uh, like Jeff, you asked before about um, student content creation. One of the things that one of my schools is talking about uh, going into next year is bringing in a new related arts class and having that related arts class be a media arts class. And so clearly with the background that I have in podcasting and broadcasting, I light up and and I'm really excited about being an advisor and a consultant in terms of, like Adam said, what equipment, what tools, what programs do we need to do some of that stuff and maybe even like furniture and everything. And so um, just like he said, I'm I'm trying to really get in the ear of uh, the outgoing principal and we're getting a a new principal coming in and, and just let them know, hey, I have this expertise and this experience. I think I could offer something here. Just, you know, I'd love for you to, to consult me on it. And, and they have, you know, and, and I'm really grateful for that because, again, I haven't been in the position very long or at that school very much. And, um, you know, it, it just goes to show that we are in a lot of ways starting to already think about just not just wrapping up this school year, but where we're headed, you know, into next year as well. I do find, I have found that in general, um, administrators are starting to plan and prepare for next year and many of the teachers I work with are not yet. And so, you know, when Jeff was saying, uh, you know, yeah, they they don't want me, they don't want to, they don't want me coming into their classroom. They don't want, you know, they don't want me to ask, can I come into your class? They, they are overwhelmed. And so sometimes I think that part of our time can, uh, can better be spent at the moment in uh in and work collaborating with those administrators so definitely agree with that um very few teachers have asked me about next year mostly it's administrators that that are asking me those questions and to speak off of kind of how adam said like he knows what will work um and how dan kind of said some things are not approved that's kind of how my district is we have our core digital tools and what we're shaping for over the summer is really doing like a 2.0 on all of those because our teachers are very proficient in google classroom all of a sudden they know google slides um but they still might be and i know you guys already know about that SAMR model they're probably still do you (laughs) <laughs> they're probably still way down there just making worksheets on Google Slides and we really want to get um, like the next level. So I think like maybe we need, and I'm just bouncing it off with you guys, like that level up. Everybody is ready to level up. Um, so we're working on that um, artifact creation, kind of how Dan is saying he's ready to make artifacts and like have a whole class around that. I love that. Um, and then the instructional side. So we kind of want to split it into two and take like something like Minecraft and think of how are you going to use that instructionally and what are those students going to create and kind of pushing that forward for our teachers. Since they don't want to think right now, we'll do it for them. (laughs) There's certainly lots of great things that we could be thinking about for next year, for the end of the year. If you guys have any suggestions, check us out on Twitter over at askthetechcoach.com. And we would love to hear from you guys. And of course, we'd love to have you guys be on a future show. Sue and I drop the podcast every single Monday morning at six o'clock and we'll be 
throughout the summertime. And I want to wrap up today with a different topic, one we didn't prepare, but one that Sue and I have been talking about for a while now. And since we have you guys on, I figured why not? And it, it's the topic of tech coach professional development, right? I know we're all well connected. We can easily go look at blogs. We can easily go do things. But for you guys, what constitutes professional development? When you're out there searching for the YouTube videos, when you're out there looking for the podcasts, what are some of the things that you find tech coaches are looking for in PD? What are some of the things that are that make you stop the YouTube videos and just sit there and binge watch a certain topic channel? What do you see as tech coach PD these days? Rebecca, I'll start with you. Ooh, sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, I kind of like set it up like a menu. Um, it can be from book studies, which I'm really excited to dive in uh, to the next book. Um, that we're working on um, as a team. So I think that individually, you might have your own kind of learning menu with podcasts, YouTube, books, um, going in and learning from teachers. I know there are so many experts in things like Desmos, and I want to go learn from them. So what we do, um, we have a digital learning channel, and I go in, I celebrate that teacher, and I get them to make a video to make PD for um, my own team and teachers. So I really feel like, I know I'm just talking, it's a menu and you can create your own menu and kind of do whatever you want. So if you went to a conference right now, Rebecca, as a tech coach, what session would you, would you run to right now to learn more about? Something I want to learn about, um, definitely robotics. I love Spiro, Lego, Vex, like
with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.